Oh, well, thank you. Um, welcome all. Um, we've actually got a, we've got a nice group and, and really uh, for those of you who are um, learning about Moss today, we're fortunate that we have a, uh, a number of board members of the Moss board joining us today. So you're going to be, if you have any questions or you want to know who your potential partners are, if you become a MASA um, owner and a MASA member, uh, there's a pretty good example of the kind of folks that are already committed, part of the FBS family. And um, so hopefully we can we give you a little bit of information and answer some questions and see if we can um, um, get you to see if you might think about joining us. So Norm, um, next slide, please. So, uh, so MASA and FBS are really, um, uh, MASA is actually built off of, uh, off of FBS. And so the FBS family of which all the MASA members are currently, that won't, I don't think will always be the case, but that is the, the history to date. And that just tells you a little bit about MASA has been formed since 2019. It's an Iowa LLC, it's a for-profit company, which is fairly important conceptually going forward. Next slide, Norm. So um, I'm just gonna hit some of the, uh, I have heard some of this information before, so I'm gonna hit it fairly fast. So it's a limited liability company. It's set up to own and continues to develop a financial hub. And we would identify, or we did identify that FBS is indeed a financial hub. It is a resource planning hub. It has the ability to track not only financial, but production information. Um, but what we wanted, you know, it's a common database that will support, you know, our management needs of uh, farms and ranches throughout, uh, actually potentially throughout the world. Next slide. So we're owned and controlled by production ag firms and agricultural accounting firms which support them. And we actually have designed this so that the ownership and control is by production firms, but we have um, the capacity to bring in partners that are non-production agriculture. And we'll talk a little bit more about that down the road. So it's being built off of FBS. Um, that was a conscientious decision by the MASA owners that you know, with that 40 years of development and intellectual property, of FBS and, and the uh, business logic that um, Norm and his teams over the years have created was a lot to build off of. We had some issues we had to deal with and that's really what MASA has been doing since we started in 2019. But we don't intend, MASA doesn't intend to try to do all things for all situations. Um, we really are focused on working with allied organizations to help develop many of the things we're doing. We'll tell you a little bit more about that. Next slide, Norm. So those are, you know, those are the things that we're de dealing with. And for those of you, um, and you know, we have a lot of MASA members that are really pretty active, not only at their farm level, but mm -hmm. also in their agricultural community and in these whole areas of traceability and responsibility to, um, by, for to our consumers and all that are part of what drives what we're doing in MASA. Um, and we're really trying to build something here that can continue to build upon itself into the future. Next slide. So these are the current MASA owners um, and these are all FPS users. A lot of them are traditional FP users. They've been using FPS for a long time. Uh, they are, uh, Initially, uh, MASA was formed because the people on this screen that you see here and others have um, had inquired about the future of FBS and where it was going. Um, you'll see some of the operations on here are some of the larger end operations, but they're not all um, towards the larger end, but they have a lot of investment in, in their data systems. Their data are super, super critical for running their operations. Um, Lata Harris, my, um, the firm I'm associated with, the accounting firm, you know, has utilized FBS for decades and we support a lot of our clients in that area. And we have found it to be a very useful tool that we need. We basically want to see that it can succeed and go forward into the future. 
Um, we've just recently been joined by Star Rock Farms from Pennsylvania. That's the most recent member. And we would like to add to this. And we have, um, as I said, organizations of different scale. Um, the, the, probably the, um, currently the, the similarity in these organizations are they are date, they like data, they like good financial information, they like um, limiting the amount of entries they have to make, um, and they have a lot invested in their data and they want to be sure they can continue to access it. And they're looking to the future and they want to be able to grow and build how they do things. Next slide. So this is the rationale that has driven a lot of what we're doing um, and why we have decided to build MASA um, uh, equity holders, decided to build off of the FBS platform. Um, when we initially put this together, there was a conscious decision. We had way more to build off of than we would have been if we went to try to look at some of the other options that are out there. And um, what I'm going to tell you about, Norm and I, and hopefully some of the board members will chime in here too, talk to you about the journey we've had to date and where we're at and why we are still looking for um, organizations to join us in this process. Next slide. So what we found, and, and I guess this was not a surprise, but when we started, we realized that one of the primary issues that had to be addressed, not very sexy issue, but and not something you could easily see as a user, was that the code that FBS was written in, Microsoft Visual Basic, was um, in need of being brought into the modern world. When we think about computers and networks now, we want to be sure we can use our data, access our data either from an input standpoint or an output standpoint through API links, through our mobile phones, through our tablets, um, being able to access real-time data anytime, any place. We've also, many of us have started to realize that sharing some selective pieces of data with other providers, be they risk management, be they uh, uh, helping uh, to uh, substantiate traceability, uh, use of uh, drugs and, and chemicals and so forth, that to do that, we really need to have a system that can, that can work in the world that we now live in and, where, and that whole world of connectivity that we are rapidly getting deeper and deeper into. And to do that, we couldn't do that on the Visual Basic platform that FBS was in and still is in to some extent. Um, so the first step was to, in phase one, was to get a, what's called a migration. We're gonna, basically it's a translation. It's a translation of the code for Visual Basic to Microsoft Access, excuse me, Microsoft.net. And that opens up a lot of things. So next slide, Norm. So we started off, and this was this is the board. Um, the board, you know, looked at where we were, looked at where we we're going to do, and we decided that the first step we we're going to do is get Transaction Plus, the financial hub, the accounting hub, um, get that converted. Um, and if we realized that once we've got that converted, we would be able to start looking at these this connectivity to connecting with others through. Uh, through the API type um, situations. And then also then it started to open up really the use of other type of reporting capabilities like Microsoft Power BI, Crystal Reports and so forth. Um, our timeline on that, uh, you know, initially it was out several years and we started to realize that we couldn't spend, we couldn't take that long, would have been the fourth quarter of 2020. And Norm, I can't remember the slide order. What do we got next? Okay, Norm, if you want to talk just a little bit about right. Okay, our our uh, our tasks were divided into three different areas. Uh, as John mentioned, uh, converting from Visual Basic to uh, to uh, .NET. Uh, it's 
changing the database from a combination of access files and flat files to an open, uh, open database, and then the development of the API. Uh, as we were uh, beginning the process, uh, we, uh, our, our head of development, uh, Martin Travolia, uh, located a company in, based in Germany that does some offshore uh, conversions and they specialize in converting from, from, uh, dot, from Visual Basic into .NET. And uh, we uh, contracted with them and uh, that sped up development considerably. We were really looking at 2023, to complete the pro project and, and that's moved it up. So we are really, most everything's gonna be done this year. So our, our local team, and they are uh, all working remotely right now, uh, but uh, specialize in the conversion into, uh, into a uh, SQL database, open database, and also working on API. We'll talk about APIs where the Fetcher group, uh, the offshore group, did the conversion, technology conversion to, uh, to Microsoft, Visual Basics to Microsoft.net. And we've been running a contract to do that. And as a result, uh, we've been able to move the, the project up. Um, and the, the goal was to keep, be able to, for FPS users to keep using the system, not having to start over again. And so we've done a phased approach where the, the phase 1B was the conversion of Transaction Plus into .NET and version 11.5 is 100% is .NET for Transaction Plus. And then roll that into, into uh, uh, Smart Feeder and Crop Audit and Lifecycle Budget. And so What's happening this year is rolling the uh, the uh, starting with Smart Feeder and uh, third quarter of of uh, 2021 and Crop Audit a fourth quarter of 2021 to be converted into the new new architecture, which again involves both conversion to uh, from Visual Basic to .NET and also conversion into an open uh, open uh, SQL uh, database that. Uh, and so we're working on that uh, concurrently. So we, what, what was originally planned to be done in 2023 would be done this, this year. And there's only one other step that, beyond that, and that's uh, for MASA members to have a, a local um, uh, SQL Server uh, database on their, on their local machines, and that's going into 2022. But uh, we, we're very fortunate we'd be able to get get this done and at the same time we're working on the API which we'll explain here in the next slide. So Mark back up just on that other slide. Yep, yep. Mark. I think this is fairly critical too and part of the reasons that we are the MASA board and you know we we need resources and you know this isn't this is um, a discussion with um, those participating on the call about an offering um, in to have an ownership interest in MASA. But as there's already been quite a bit of capital expended, um, you know, currently, and we'll talk about this more at A1 unit is $30,000. There's nothing that says it's gonna stay $30,000. I had talked about the fact that um, MASA is a for-profit company. And if, uh, if you want to participate in the MASA uh, as a MASA equity owner, you know, this is an opportunity, that opportunity um, most likely will not be available forever. And as we get closer and closer to completing these initial steps, the that opportunity is probably going to diminish or the cost of participating is going to go up quite a bit. So Norm has always um, very strongly believed in uh, supporting his, his, his pool of users and, and the FBS family. Um, you know, you have to be a, a, a qualified investor to participate in this, but if you are one, you know, this is, this is I feel, is probably getting to be the time to consider that. Um, and, and sitting on the sidelines and waiting for to see what happens, 
Doesn't mean that the MASA code, the FBS code won't be available to you if you're not a MASA member, but the cost differential is going to change um, dramatically as we get farther and farther along this path. Go ahead, Norm. Okay, so one of the things that differentiates uh, MASA from, from FBS will be the API. And uh, we're not going to develop everything that could possibly be developed for application. In fact, there, there are literally thousands of different applications out there that have touched agriculture that uh, we could share data with. And, a, and an API is an application programming interface that uh, resides in the cloud and transfers data uh, back and forth. And uh, this, is, this is a unique, unique uh, opportunity for MASA members only be able to to uh, to uh, use this technology, and uh, there's there's two two initial applications of this. Uh, one is that uh, and and Daryl is working with this with uh, Microsoft Power BI is is a reporting and dashboards and and business intelligence uh, working through cloud uh, cloud access. And the second is is doing an API with with with, apply, with allied vendors, and we're having discussions with those uh, vendors right now at different levels. And one of the things, one of the advantages of, of uh, MASA here is that the, uh, is that we've identified who some of the key players are because uh, MASA members are using, are working with these other uh, vendors. And we've, uh, we're trying to pro prioritize what, uh, what uh, uh, technologies are, will be the first, uh, First uh, partners to work with. Some are a little more eager to work than with than others. And uh, you know, here's here are the, some of the API discussions we've had. Uh, and they, they expand from uh, maintenance software to uh, sharing uh, precision farming data for off of the off of the cloud and and uh, farm management products. Uh, uh, Marketing, uh, management, and, uh, and and lending, and we have some of the the uh, MOS members on, and board members on the call. Any any uh, comments that you you could add or perspective you could add to this? Yeah. So um, the way I think about what an API does for you. Um, and uh, anyone can correct me if I'm wrong here, but it it would be similar to the function within FBS of import um, importing entries into the system or exporting you know through the through the TA plus import export feature or like a feed mill interface or a packer interface those different built-in interfaces to seamlessly move data in it would be similar to that except you wouldn't actually have to uh, it would be automated uh, coming from from the other vendor rather than um, going through the process we do now and then on the data outbound side i know our operation does a lot of copy reports out of fbs and paste them into spreadsheets or other um, data um, analysis tools or or have to Im actually input data into other systems that use information that come out of our system now well that can all if those other data partners have the same capability on their side you can make those um, links automated so the ability to um, efficiently and accurately transport data in and out becomes uh, the possibilities become next to endless with that. Yeah, I think that that's great, Joe. That's really helpful. And the other thing I would add to that is to think about it in terms of anytime you're keeping parallel, redundant setup tables in this system and that system, it's connecting the dots between those. So, you know, I'm tracking a group of hogs with a certain group ID in FBS, Smart Feeder, I'm tracking that same group of hogs in MetaFarms with the same ID and it's just, you know, connecting the dots. So any information that exists in this database over here connects to the information 
corresponding to that same uh, group of hogs over in this other database, or it could be a field, it could be a center number. It, it you know, basically you're you're uh, integrating the FBS database with these other allied databases. So the the goal would be to make your whole data system feel like it's kind of all part of the same program. So you, if you're using a non-FBS product to help manage something, it the API can make it feel more like it's an integrated module within FBS. And and this is widely widely used. This is this is where the world is going with the API uh, connection. So uh, there's no way that a single company can keep up with all the different applications. But uh, the world has gone to an open architecture approach to this, so that you're able to share data in in, in real time through the cloud uh, bet between between applications. So and one of the this, this, one of the keys here to doing this with Masa rather than people doing it individually would be the goal. The goal is to leverage the the setup and programming to get those interfaces made across multiple different clients. So we don't have to make um, it's not Daycase Farms developing their thing over here and Lane Haven developing their thing over here and Peterson's Farms developing their thing over here. We try to collectively program as much as that is possible. So it can be, it's not this simple, but basically, oh, copy and paste that link with um, Meta Farms from, from farm number one to farm number two um, or with Conservus or with whatever databases we we make rather than having to do that individually as farms, we can do that, make a MASA connection and, and just link everyone to that. And we're the last few weeks we we're uncovering that um, there are lots of people grabbing information from especially big companies with API. So there's already a bunch of development to extract some information that can be leveraged potentially um, to reduce the cost of, of that. So we're, I mean, this, this API thing is a, a maturing industry and uh, working collectively should help us reduce the cost to play in that space. Yeah, just like yeah, we're our lever leveraging our understanding and we're also uh, getting attention of these other partners as working, representing uh, large progressive operations uh, you know, we, we're, we're able to accomplish things a lot quick, quicker than an individual company, either software or, or farm could do. So there's lots of elements to what Moss is doing, but one of them historically is thinking about what our ancestors did to raise a barn. They got together and they did it together. And together they were collectively able to pull things together and get farther along. And that's what Joe was talking about. If you do this by yourself, all these pieces have to be done over and over again. But as a group, we're able to figure out things. And that's one of the advantages we've been finding. Bernard, you know, you pointed this out early that, you know, the fact that this is a group of farms that are working and we can share a lot of this information with each other and we can get farther along than we would be on our own. So being part of MASA is really connecting you into that, into that group. Um, and I see some real advantages of that as we go forward. So just giving you a, a, a always good to be able to f give you feedback, timelines, development timelines. Our next version uh, for FBS and MASA is, is 11.5. That's, we're testing that right now. And MASA will, members will be able to download that uh, uh, beta version this month. FBS will be distributing that via CDs uh, at the end of uh, first quarter. Uh, the APIs are, are we're, we're developing those and testing those and, and at the, the cloud server uh, connecting with uh, Power BI and that's happening right now. Uh, it won't be available for FBS users. No, won't be if you're not a MASA member. 
uh, you won't, won't have access to the API. Uh, performance, we're doing some, making some changes. Uh, some of it's due to the .NET conversion, some of it's due when we're changing the logic. We have benefit of uh, .NET being able to access more memory. And so we're able to speed up uh, reports. Uh, uh, date cache exchange is, is one of the large, slower reports uh, historically. We've got that sped that up to two, two and a quarter times faster than the uh, 11.4 current version. Uh, what's happening in the third quarter, we'll have smart feeder converted to .NET and, and SQL. That'll be version 11.6. 11, and then 11.7 version uh, at fourth quarter of 2021, which will bring in crop audit. And, uh, and then finally, 11.8, this is strictly uh, uh, MASA members. That'll be a local SQL server, Microsoft SQL server, and uh, .NET 6. So we're trying to differentiate to uh, help you know what, what when things are happening, what's going to be available for MOS members, and what uh, what uh, available for FBS users. So Norm, back up to your slide with the um, with showing the Azure Cloud. So so everything there. Um, so what's the, what's the difference? All that everything on the right is not going to be available through FBS. Everything in the cloud, APIs, all that, that's a, that's a MASA. So that'll be either buying code from MASA or being a MASA member. Um, FBS um, will have some capabilities and, and will participate in some of these changes, but now go a little forward on your slides, Norm. But in the um, next one, please. Next one. So in the term sheet that uh, if you're interested, we certainly just need to let us know. We'll send you a copy of this. Um, this is about buying a um, really for this group that we're talking to a class A1 unit, which is $30,000. Um, and in this document is the operating agreement for the MASA operates under that the board is participates in and so forth, but also the intellectual property agreement between MASA and FBS. So um, as, and this is starting this year, um, now that the, the new code is rolling out in, in the FBS product, FBS is going to pay MASA a royalty for use of that code. So you will see, and Norm has already, um, and you probably already have seen this, the FBS prices are gonna raise, rise, um, because that royalty payment is coming back to MASA to, to help pay this. Now, the other issue is that um, this is the intent is over time, a MASA member will should end up paying less than you would for an FBS for the same, um, same utilization. So uh, if, if your thought is, well, I'll just stay an FBS user, and I don't need to change. Well, you maybe don't need to change, but if you want to have access to the things that we're talking about today, then potentially you need to become a MASA member, or at least you will be buying software from MASA at some point. Is that it? Any questions? And you're welcome to use the chat function if you're asking questions or or this small enough group you can speak up. So I, I want to reiterate a couple points. One being, um, I know I know one of my uh, uh, concerns when MASA began was, okay, we got a three year development time frame, and after three years, then we can start doing new stuff is what it looked like to me. And you wonder, will the, you know, can we get it done in that amount of time and how much more is it actually gonna cost? Well, the change in development strategy and, and um, going offshore with some stuff, we're, we're actually gonna start delivering new stuff well ahead of when we thought we'd even start working on new stuff. And we've spent far less than what we anticipated we'd spend on uh, on the whole project. So 
So we think that's a, if, if some of the concerns you had going into the thing was, well, I don't, you know, how, how big of a ask is this going to be? Um, the, that, that cost is much more defined or that risk is much more defined now. And we have not done any capital calls um, since we started. So we haven't um, made it mandatory to put any, any money in. We added a different class of stock for people who were interested in putting more in or wanted to join who weren't users. So that's how we've funded everything so far. So no, no capital calls on that. So we wanted to make sure we got that um, kind of that story out. And then the other thing is, okay, if you were waiting to see what's actually going to be deliverable, um, well, now we have some more firm timetables on when, when new things are going to be available and more what that looks like. Um, we, we certainly, um, as we get examples of what those look like, we'll continue pushing that stuff out. But I mean, we've, we're kind of too, we're kind of through the initial build out that we we thought was going to take three years and now it's time to do the fun stuff. Let's make this stuff really perform. So if this connectivity is what your farm really needs, um, if you, the sooner you get in, the more you can, you can start using it as it develops and you can be part of the development prioritization and help contribute in how we shape that as well. So it's um, this, this is a good time to to jump on board if some of those things were your were your concerns before. So, so Norm, back up your slide just one, if you would. So, the A one units, um, you know, you have voting rights. It's it's a it's an equity right. It's a full equity right. Um, it's one one A one unit, one vote. Um, it's subject to user fees and capital costs, but as Joe says, we haven't had capital costs to date. Um, all the A1 unit holders will hold a majority of the board seats, so VASA will be controlled by the A1 units. Um, it's limited. We actually, you have to have permission to buy an A1 unit by the board. You have to meet the criteria to um, have an ownership in it it does have it does carry with it the obligation to pay user fees um annually but that's the that's the primary code and i i think that's probably what those of you who are not masa members who are listening in today um would be what you would be um, starting with as joe said uh, show the next slide norm so the a2 units are basically very similar to the a1 units they have voting rights they have equity rights the big difference is they're not subject to capital costs. Uh, the majority of the MASA A1 members have bought an A2 unit. Um, that shows their commitment to the project um, and that and A2 units are available also um, to anybody who's listening to this call as a qualified investor. Um, and the A2 units um, could participate on the board. Um, and they, but they're limited to a minority of the board seats, and you know that's how that's how that works out. But that's been a very important part of the MASA development plan to date. So that uh, term sheet has the information in about both the A ones and the A two units. Other questions? So many of you have participated in in uh, ethanol plants and and south farms and other llc's and this is pretty much the same general business model so you guys know how to reach out to norm you know i'm john mcnutt i'm i'm i've s currently serving as the board president um we actually we run a very lean MOSS is a very lean organization our primarily MOSS is a, as a as a contract with FBS that does most of the development services we have a couple um, of additional things that we work on a couple other sources we work with a law firm um, 
the Brown Winnick firm out of Des Moines, Iowa that does the legal work and has done the term sheet and so forth. So there's, that's information. Latta Harris is the accountant for, um, for MASA and, um, you know, uh, and Latta Harris, uh, full disclosure, is also a, an A1 holder, unit holder. I'm an A2 unit holder. Um, but we don't, um, Latta Harris doesn't control anything. We're just, we're just a, a couple of votes out of the, out of the big pool at this point. John, Don Anthony, if I could ask a couple of questions. Sure, Don. Yep. Okay, I'm a sole proprietor. No heirs coming back to the farm. 70 years old, so my future, I look at exits. <laughs> but you've two questions on this. Uh, what's the liquidity if you know, if I were to die, can my heirs get money back out of it? Is there an exit strategy of some sort for us? Second thing, you've emphasized this is a for-profit um, organization. Do you foresee dividends at some point? Well, you got a bunch of board members here. So these are all questions. So by intent, the answer to your question is yes. You know, first off, we, we do see a time when the units will be traded. And, you know, can I guarantee to you today that there's going to be a market for your unit someday? Can't do that. Um, just because I don't know, can't see that far in the future. But, the, but they have the ability to be traded. They have the ability to change ownership. Has to be, it follows the rules. And those rules are identified in the operating agreement. Um, and we and the board members um, certainly intend to see a rate of return from this ownership. That rate of return may be in different forms. It may be in lowering their costs of accessing this technology, but it also could very well be in the form of a dividend, but I don't know. We don't know yet. We're not that far down the road. But the intent is that's certainly possible, Don. Thank you. Well, um, just to kind of piggyback on what John said there, we know that as a like a lowest common denominator, the the common membership of Masa all sees value in what we're developing. That we can all that we're all going to realize benefits from having you know we're already using we're all already using FPS software and believe in it and it's a central component to our operations. And we're all bought into the idea of adding functionality to that and leveraging that out for a benefit that we all see. And we all, I think, also all collectively agree that taking a cooperative approach to tackling that, eating that elephant, is, you know, superior to trying to do it on our own. There have been other farms, you know, of scale that have tried to, you know, go off on their own and do something in a, you know, software development, um, you know, of their own. And they they quickly realize how you know how how expensive that is and what the ongoing costs of supporting the system. You can develop a system and then you have to continue to support it and and uh, you know evolve with with the future with that. So I you know the folks that we know that have um, endeavored to do that on their own um, have have been very surprised with the costs that they've encountered. What we don't know is what as we develop this what the broad appeal to the market is going to be and what that's worth. So, but it stands to reason that if we're developing something that, you know, is of value to the members that are all producers, that, you know, it is going to be something that has value to a broader market. But to sit here today and say, we're going to be able to sell, you know, the MASA platform to, you know, a hundred or 200 or a thousand, you know, users, you know, in North America or around the world, you know, we don't, we don't know where that's going to take us, but we, but we do know that, you know, that it's something that has real value to real producers. And that's the premise we're building upon. Um, so that should extrapolate beyond just the membership at some point. So Don, you may want to consider if you're interested from an investment standpoint, as opposed to a user of code so much. The A2 units, that's what they're designed for. 
Uh, that way you don't have the user fee, you just have the investment component of it. You don't have the use of it, but you do have the investment. So Masa, like Blake just outlined, is definitely thinking about priority number one being functionality uh, for current members. There are other outfits chasing the pie in the sky of 66% of um, operations with over 2,000 acres are on QuickBooks. Um, so there, there is a huge amount of operations that probably need a more sophisticated set of accounting software. Um, and no one has been able to break through that market or deliver something um, more, uh, you know, to defeat the, the QuickBooks or get, get conversions from QuickBooks. And it, I mean, the pie in the sky thing would be to enter this new data ecosystem if you've got to be able to make all those connections and you're on QuickBooks, you're not, I mean, you're not even close to playing in that arena. So it would, it would stand to reason that going forward uh, to maintain competitiveness, you're going to need an evolved data management um, function and skill set within your operation somehow to do that. Um, and there's not currently a whole bunch of competition in that space. So um, there, I mean, and the scalability of this thing is really relatively simple. It's not like you got to go buy a whole bunch of more capital resources to expand the model. It's add subscriptions and make sure you got the support to support them. And it's just, it's more revenue. So this, I mean, the scalability of this is, um, it's pretty big, but, um, that's not exactly what we're chasing right now either. But, um, so your question about when to expect a return or would we get a return? I mean, realistically, we still need to fund development. So cash dividend returns probably are, are a minimum of a couple of years out. But I mean, if, if a hundred people would sign up this year, we, we might have more capital than what we can thoughtfully develop um, as well, so. If you don't mind, would you clarify one thing for me? If I were to buy a, an A2 unit, but I want to continue to use the software until whatever time I choose to retire, if there's no user fees, how do you get your pound of flesh out of me? Uh, in your case, if, that, if you bought an A2 and you wanted to continue to use FBS, you would need to remain an FBS customer and pay whatever FBS um, annual uh, subscription cost would be. So you could do that. You, wouldn't have to, you would not have MASA code, you'd have FBS code, and you just would be an A2 investor. Does that answer your question, Don? Yeah, thank you very much. Anyone else through chat or uh, or uh, verbally? Have any questions? I just I'd just like to add to what some others have said. I mean, this. I mean, we joined we joined Masa because we were looking looking to the future, just like everyone else here is, and looking at the changing environment in software and capabilities. And to me, it looks like a really good way. We've got a relatively small group of people here together that are developing developing a product that will provide data that we can actually manage from. And to me, that's the most important thing. Yes, we get the tax, we get tax, we get accrual accounting, but marrying all that, marrying the data from the e the, we're not the hog guys, but they're pulling all the, pulling all the field data in for us is very important. And, We've got a group small enough and nimble enough. We're getting, we're building a product that I think is going to be very, very valuable to a lot of people. It's kind of like Joe said, 66% of the people over 2,000 acres on QuickBooks. There's going to be a percentage of those that are going to really need a 
product of this nature. And I think the long-term future is really good. Okay. Uh, and, and I'll reach out to any of us, any of the board members or Norm or myself, if you have additional questions. You, um, if you got some other partners in your organization that you want to communicate with, um, I'll talk to Norm about, about getting that set up. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we're going to post this uh, to uh, to FBS users so they'll be able to review that and you'll be able to review the presentation again. Thank you so much, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.